sir. Um, no, those are for you. Oh, for me? Oh, yeah, keep. yeah, to keep and to have and put on your fridge and be like, oh, look, this is my English stuff. So, oh, yes, those. Okay, yeah, exactly. So hold on to these. We're gonna we're gonna do that. Did you get some chocolate? Helps a little bit, right? Hopefully, it's not all melted. Okay. Um, I am gonna close these doors because sometimes the, like the doors let out. Maybe it is doing cool air now, and. Um, you can't know because it's controlled over at Via Verde, and then the doors let in more of the hot air. So we'll see. I'll be the first one to feel if it's hotter or colder. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> when I melt into like a puddle, you'll be like, oh, I think it's hotter. Okay. All right. So, questions, questions. First, a little review of where everything is, right? And remember, your first week of classes is all about figuring out where everything is. It really is. Teachers, we've how did we get to be teachers? We took a shit ton of classes, right? So we know this, okay? Um, and most of your teachers will be nice and work with you. And there's a few assholes, and that's true of every profession, right? So I hope you don't have them. I generally, the people I know and work with around here, generally very nice people. Now, I do have an English teacher colleague who I love her to death, but she's an asshole in the classroom. I tell her, I'm like, you're an asshole in the classroom. She's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> She's really nice, though. It's weird. I mean, it's just really weird. So who knows? So, OK, so you do want to remember that really think about, um, you know, Kelly.ninja or really your schedule right here as your textbook, your map, your road guide. Everything you need is going to be linked from here, from my information. You need to find something in the syllabus. That's there. You, you miss a day or you want to go back and you want to review. You know, you can go to the playlist right there, and that's there. Um, so um, whatever you need is going to be right there, OK? Um, except for me. And I'm in 1101 when I'm not here. Well, not all the time, but at least during those hours, room 1101, I do not think it feels better up here. <laughs> um, from. Um, 1101, right where the counselors are, you know, there's a hallway beh beside counseling. And if you go down that hallway, you go immediately left and then right, boom, that's me, okay? So there's that. That's where I am when I'm not around here. That's where the candy is, okay? And we'll, what we'll do in a couple of weeks, we'll take a break and we'll do conferences. You'll be doing some stuff online. You'll come in, sit down with me for 30 minutes, and I'll have not only candy, but other snacks as well, OK? This ain't the principal's office, all right? So I've even got a disco ball in there. <laughs> it's very small. <laughs> but. <laughs> no, it's on the schedule. And I'll talk about that as we get closer to it, OK? So but if you want to look ahead, it's on the schedule. But yeah, there it is. So. You know, just remember that this is your homework, okay? So whatever's here, and just when you forget, because we all have those moments, and later in the semester when life is really busy and midterm and almost the end, you're going to be like, uh, what? And you're looking at it, and the words just kind of go uh, all over the place. You go back to the top, homework, what's due today, and you say simplest things. That's what I do. When I get confused, when I get lost, when I get anxious, when I get whatever, I'm like, Kelly, do it like a third grader, OK? Make it simple, OK? What is the first thing you need to do? And I'll be like, boom. That's why I put these in little squares. And I give everybody a paper copy. I'm not saying that schedule's not going to change. And we talked about last time it's not totally complete for the first part. But that way, you can kind of check things off. So if you like, if you're a check things off kind of person, OK? So all right, so there's that. And then really. The only other thing you need to really be familiar with is Blackboard. And you go to my EPCC, and when you go there, oh wait, I don't actually want to close that. When you go there, my EPCC, yeah, sign in. And then Blackboard, you can get, right, get to it right there. And then on Blackboard, you want to go to your courses, because what are you looking for? You're looking for a course, your class. It will probably look like this. That's just the way they have it. But I like the pictures, so you do whichever one you like, pictures or a list. Um, and here we are. Well, here's the 1301. 
okay? And I've still got the schedule there for you, the syllabus, my website, and these are other things, Will. Here's the quiz. For those of you, y'all need to take the quiz, okay? So when you go to Blackboard, there's the quiz right there. Remember, number two is true, okay? Um, and yeah, if you didn't make 100 on it, go back in and take it again because I leave it open the whole week. So that way, you know, first week's crazy, and if something happens and you miss first day or your teacher's like, oh, number, but I am going to fix number two for everybody, okay? Just get credit for that, yeah. It's the same quiz, right? Yeah, it's the same thing. You just do it once, yeah, because there's no point doing it for that class and this class, so make sure you've done that. On ours, um, the one for the INRW that we're in now, um, all we're doing here is we'll be turning in these summary responses we're going to write. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it has the links there, but that's all we're doing is just turning stuff in there. Okay. So when we get to those, we'll deal with that. Okay. And let's go look at our schedule for today. What other questions? Yeah. So we use the Blackboard to turn in assignments? Yeah, that's all Blackboard is for is turning stuff in. That's the only thing I use, that in grades. You can look at your grades, okay? But a lot of things, like if you're turning it in, like, I mean, obviously, you write an essay, I got to grade it, right? So it takes me a while to get that in there. The contact information, that's not on Blackboard, that's in a form, so I have to, I usually wait till the end of, like, the second week to go in and, you know, so people can get it in there and put that free 100 in there, that kind of stuff, so. Because okay. I remind people. So I'm like, get your free 100. So if you haven't filled out that contact form yet, get your free 100. It's free. I don't charge you for it. What's that? It's the, the one right here. It's on both schedules. Oh, it's not. I'm sorry. I'm a liar, liar, pants fire. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the, the 1301. Read right here. Optional contact form. Fill this out for a free 100. So, yeah, read. Like, you need to read everything in the homework box, okay? Make sure you do. Don't just, like I mentioned, I've, there's something, I may not mention everything here. It's your responsibility as a college student to read the schedule, right? It is not my job to show you. In fact, I'm probably one of the very few teachers you will have who will show you the schedule almost every day. Yeah. And that's really because I have so much ADD. I have to look at it myself, okay? Because I've made it where it helps me stay focused, and that's another thing, right? You take your notes, you think about how do you set up your schedule and keep up with your own schedule. What do you do for yourself to keep yourself focused, right? Okay, y'all gonna have to share with the whole class. So one time it was the last World Cup, and I was teaching in this classroom back here, and I, I see this guy, and he's looking at his phone, and he's looking at his phone, and I'm like is there a game right now? And he's like, yeah. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, who is it? And it was Mexico versus someone. And I was like, and y'all came to English class? I know. I was like, oh. so yeah. So, um, you know, I was like, keep us up. Let me know if there's something we need to go watch. So, you know, and once in a while he'd go like this. I'm like, do we need to see it? He's like, no. And it would just keep us up to date on the score. <laughs> so anyway, but all right, so here we go. So there's that. So yeah, read completely and notice the visuals too, right? I mean, you've got the boxes. So you ask yourself, did I do two things? Did I read four things, right? One, two, three. And that's also why I like to give you the paper one because you can write it out. Now, sometimes this may change because if, well, like the, um, the, this, the, the, Myth of the Good Writer, that's on the Purdue Owl. I didn't put that up. If they decide to take it down, nothing I can do about that, right? So you'd be like, it's gone, and I'd be like, it's gone. Let me read it to you. It's great, right? And we'll figure something out. That's the way technology is. So I think I'm just going to see if I can't get us a new classroom anyway. I'm going to have to go home and change. I have class tonight, man. They're going to be like, dude, what'd you do? Go work out and then come to class? <laughs> Does that make more sense? A little bit more? Okay. All right. So how about we move on and see what the schedule for us looks like today? 
Let's see. Oh, two things. Oh, my goodness gracious. We got a truck. Yeah. Or was that just a stretch? Uh, Stretching is okay. All right. Okay. So what you have in your hands is um, on one side, you have the summary response assignment. And so let me go find that. Right here it is. All right, so on one side you have the assignment. So this is what we do most of. And when you look, you know, for this class, we are it, it does support the 1301. So as we move on, we start doing some stuff in there. I mean, like I said last time, the first thing I always do is say, job questions from the last class, you know, whatever, and we can work on that. But then we also have our own work, okay? Um, so we're doing all these summary responses. Well, if you read the assignment, pretty straightforward. Well. All of the assignments, you, you know, there, if you read, like you're supposed to, right? Remember, reading implies, doesn't mean the teacher's going to talk about everything, means you should have some of this in your head as we're moving on. But this gives you the overall. Your in-class notes are 25% of your grade here, and so those are just kind of conjoined with the 1301s, okay? So you want to take notes, and then just remember, do your 1301 notes, hold on to them. You don't need to put them in that pile. Then once you do this class, then just put them all in the pile together. And if you already did it, it's okay, because you already did it, okay? But that way I'm not going through and saying, oh, here's Danae's. Oh, wait, here's Danae's too. And, you know, I don't have to shuffle huge piles of paper, okay? But it's first week, all about figuring out how to do it, okay? Um, so you'll have that. That's 25%. Next 25% of your grade is these summary responses. Now... If you do them, and I am this way with drafts in both classes, you do them thought thoughtfully, carefully, to the best of your ability, that's a 100. Now, this isn't just about giving everybody a 100 for, for participation. It's because you can't, you really can't write until you write something down. And I know that sounds as kind of silly as wherever you go, there you are. But we can have great ideas. I can know I want to write this thing in my head. But until I write it down, I can't decide, is this good, is this bad? Go ahead, do it, do it. Mm. Is this good, is this bad? Do I need to change stuff? Do I want to keep this, get rid of that, whatever, right? So you have to write it down first to figure out where you're going with something. And so it's that important in the writing process that I'm willing to say, here's a 100. So you can know if you're taking notes and turning them in, and if you are, Doing the draft of these, you've already got 50% of your grade, right? For this class. Nice, huh? Sweet. Okay? Because what will happen is you do the draft of those, and I'll give you feedback on them and say, okay, here's your 100 for getting your draft done on time. Late fees apply. You all know late rules. You know where to find them in your syllabus. Okay? Um, so whenever you do that, you have that. But then you'll be choosing three of those that you're like, and I'll put, here's what I'd grade I'd put if I graded it now, right? So you'll know, here's my grade for doing it, for getting it drafted, and here's what grade it would get if it was going into a grade book now, right? So you choose three of those out of the six we do that will go into um, your portfolio. And so your final portfolio is also 25% of your grade. And it has a cover letter, so your portfolio is just saying, look, here's some of my work from this semester, right? And so you're going to have a letter saying, dear Kelly, blah, 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 blah. And I tell you exactly what to talk about. And we'll worry about this. This is end of the semester. You can't do this. You can't plan for this until you have lived through this semester. You can't say, here's my work for the semester. And you haven't done it yet, right? I always say, you never know where you've been until you're gone. You know, in your life, think about it. Can you really, did you really know what childhood was like while you were in it? No, right? Now you look back and you're like, oh, that's what it was like. I miss that shit. I hope you miss that shit. <laughs> I hope you had a good childhood. Look back fondly on. Um, and then you'll have final versions of your, some of your essays from 1301. So that's easy. Part of that's just organizing and putting things together and we'll do a final reflection. And you'll have final versions of three summary responses you want me to grade. And so between the time that you draft it and I give it back to you with comments and say, here's where the grade would be right now, 
you can work on it, hand it in to me again, I'll give you more feedback, we'll talk about it together, and I'd say, okay, here's where the grade would be now. That'll go up, I've never had anybody go down. You have to like, be like, oh, she said this was good, I think I'll screw it up. Nobody ever does that, okay? So, um, so you have that opportunity, if you're like, yeah, I really like this one, this makes sense to me. I know this is one of the ones I'm gonna wanna put in that portfolio. You just, you would just turn it into me when you turn in your notes and I'll be like, ooh, there's a revision of one of the summary responses and I'll, the first one you'll turn in online. After that, you'll turn them in, you know, um, print it out, okay. But when we get there, we'll talk about that. What I'm saying is with those three you're turning in that get graded, graded, you have opportunity to work on it, go to the writing center, fix it, ask me questions, all of that. Okay, because writing is a process. I'm teaching you the writing process, okay? Other people will judge you on the final stuff. And the other 25% for the course is your grade from 1301, okay? So since they are co-requisite and they're part, all right? So what we want to focus on though right now is the, um, the summary responses. And summary responses are very typical kind of thing, you've probably done them before where you read something and you say, here's what it's about and you summarize it and you say, here's what I think. Uh, that, that happens in from, you know, fifth grade, third grade on to through college, okay? Um, in fact, one of my neighbors who was getting a nursing degree had annotated bibliographies that were basically summary responses due, like she had one or two to do every night. She wrote more than I did as an English major. Yeah, I know, oh shit, because she'd come over and, and I'd help her with the grammar, so. Um, so you're gonna have a two paragraph response. It's gonna be two paragraphs. You're gonna have, let me just go over here and, and do this. Um, you're gonna have that response, here we go. Open this. Um, no, all right, let's see what we've got. We've got, it's gonna be a two paragraph response and you're gonna have the first paragraph, you're just gonna summarize, okay? Now, one of the things in the assignment, when you click on the assignment, you find how to write a summary, and that's an important part. When you see links in an assignment, unless they say like extra or helpful resources, it's kind of assumed you're gonna read that stuff. This is a real short two-pager, right? So when we get ready to start a summary response, you wanna make sure and read this. So you're gonna do that, you're gonna use at least one quote from the source. So if we were gonna write about the myth of the great writer, we'd wanna find something we either like or we disagree with. Because that's always great, because if you like something, you can say, hey, here's why I like this. This makes sense because blah, 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 right? What happens when you read something you disagree with? What's your first thought? That's wrong, that's stupid, here's why though, right? We're like, well, what about that? And what about that? And what about that? So if you find something you disagree with, that's a good thing to quote too. Because it gives you, then you just got to explain why I'm not sure I agree with this. For example, you know, or because, boom, there's words in your head to put on the page. What's in your head and what's in your heart on that page first? Then we'll worry about the grammar, we'll worry about all the technicalities, right? but first you gotta have ideas down. Um, and in the second part, that's where you're gonna discuss what stands out for you. That's where you might probably most likely put that quote in. It might go in other places, but you might put that quote in and say, yeah, I agree with this, or I don't agree with this, or I like this, or this reminds me of this, or I've experienced that. This is all about your response. What do you think? Right? Um, and then, so you've got to use at least one quote. Oh, notice I, even in the assignment, repeated that twice, okay? And then we're working to integrate quotes smoothly, use citation. These are things we're going to study over the course of the semester. One of the things you can do to make yourself sound most college-y is stop trying to put big words in things because they always sound wrong unless they're the right word. So if you're using big words just to use big words, you're not going to sound smart. It really, I'd try it and then it sounds stupid. Okay, so you know what the right word is there? Not unintelligent, stupid. I sound stupid, yeah. So yeah, right? The difference between the almost right word and the right word, okay? Y'all are a pretty good class, y'all are great.
Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this um, because it's nice to be able to see a sample. Let's see if we can get this going on. Okay, so you do want to make sure, and when you're reading something, preview it before you read it. Like the things I kind of pointed out today, like looking at the schedule where you notice, oh, the bullets, right? You notice those kinds of things. Like what is it telling you by the way it's laid out, by if it's on the web page, like what's the name of the web page it's on? Who, who put that web page up there, right? Those kinds of things. So who, what, where, when, right? Who wrote it? What's the name of it? The source, the date, the location. But then we can also think about as you're reading, you want to think about what's the purpose because this will help you do that response part because that response part really kind of depends on why was this written? Why did um, McNutty write McNulty? McNutty, I can't remember. I say McNutty because in The Wire, HBO series, the main detective's name is McNulty and the cops all call him McNutty. So <laughs> McNulty in um, Myth of the Great Writer, why do you think she wrote that? Besides, she has a job at the Purdue Owl and they said, we need something there. Write something. It's your job. You get paid. So the Purdue Owl is an online writing center. That's what the Owl is for. She's writing to students, isn't she? I mean, she's saying, if you've ever had a class where somebody made you feel bad, right? As a student, you shouldn't feel bad. So she's writing to students. I find it very encouraging. So I would just, boom, say, see, this is not a mystery. This is not hard. You just look at it and say, what's this doing? Oh, yeah, she's writing to students, So and she's trying to encourage them. There we go, right? So she's trying to express, to persuade, to inform. You know, we could put any of that in there, really. Um, and then you also want to kind of look and say, does it have page numbers? Or if we're doing a video, we would look and say, you know, is there a timestamp for the time if we're doing quotes, things like that? So when we look here, you can see this is, I mean, you can't see here, but when you're online, you can see it's a Purdue Owl, right? And we can see the myth of the good writer, and this is Aaron McNulty, not McNutty, okay? Though The Wire is a great series. Season five is kind of weird. But anyway, so when we look at that, let's see, here we go. See? Um, and this is one of the things, is a lot of people, this is all the stuff we're taught to ignore whenever we read, right? When we read an article online, we really don't pay a whole lot of attention to, this is called the masthead up here at the top that gives us who does this, who's responsible, what's the name, a lot of the, you know, stuff over here, or things at the bottom too, like who it's by. We might just be reading the article, right? flipping through, looking at headlines, and then we click and say, oh, how much water? What happens when you drink a lot of water? <laughs> I read one once. It was so clickbait. It was hilarious. It was like two paragraphs, and at the end it said, you have to pee a lot. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that's beautiful. <laughs> you know, I mean, so here we go. We look at these things. We're like, okay, we have that. We want to know, okay, wait, what's up with the Purdue Owl? We can go open this. And it will tell us, here we go, the Purdue Owl. Ah, we're a globally renowned resource that provides assistance to English students, teachers, professionals, organizations. Our goal is to assist clients in their development as writers, no matter what their skill level. And what is Purdue? Purdue University. So all of a sudden, we're thinking, OK, that's where this is at. This is where Aaron McNulty works, at least, right? So we can already tell a lot from a reading by, um, by just kind of looking at the source before we even read it. And so that kind of previewing is very important. Um, so with this one, we know this is the myth of the good writer. Okay, exercise time. I was going to say you won't break a sweat, but we'll see. Everybody do this. We're doing, those of you who may be reviewing online, we're doing our two fingers like up and down, like air quotes. Okay, everybody making air quotes? Okay, cool. Oh, wait, wait. All right, cool, excellent. So from now on, in college writing, if you write down the title of something small, a web article, just this article, right? Just the myth of the good writer. Uh, you know, a web article, something small, a poem, a song, something like that, put it in quote marks. So you can see up here, 
I wrote the myth of the good writer. I've got the major words capitalized and I got quote marks around it, okay? All right, now stretch your arms out. Those of you by the window, be careful and try not to hit your neighbor. Okay, stretch your arms out. Dante, right? No. Exactly. It's totally, it's totally not your name. Where's Dante? Another class. Oh, yeah, he's in night class. Sorry. What's your name? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I forgot that's her name, too. It's Antonio. It's what? Antonio. There we go. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yeah, and if you push out here from your palms, you can get some of that isometric exercises. Ah. Ah, okay. So if you're writing the name of a big thing, like the whole book, you're going to write the Purdue. It is from the Purdue Online Writing Lab. That's their whole website. Oh, my gosh. Do you know how much stuff they have on their whole website? It is like insane. I got the site map right here. Check this out. Look, they got this and this and this and this and that. That's like, man, like that's seriously like a book or two or 45 or 59, right? You going to read every one of those pages? It's a big thing. So what we do when we have the title of a big thing, a book, a movie, a video game, you drop money on a video game, you want it to last more than five minutes, right? The album, not just the song, song title goes in the quote marks. The whole album title goes in italics, or if you're handwriting, you can underline it, okay? So that's how we tell people, hey, this is what this is. This is an article the myth of the good writer. It's by Aaron McNulty. Here, if you could see this better, the source, this Purdue Online Writing Lab, that's in italics, this, you know, leaning over font, okay? Um, there's no date given on this, and I know this, but I had to look carefully. When I look at this, I'm not just going to look here. I'm going to look here at the top. I'm going to look at the bottom. I'm going to say, let wait, is there anything that, that links to... Uh, McNulty Moore and her name is not a thing. Nope, I don't have any date, okay? That happens on the web, but a lot of times you will have a date and you'll need that to do your, your citation information correct. Because when you use a source and you're doing formal citation, you got to put all that information in at the end of the paper, okay? So that's why you want that who Title, author, source, date, and then location, right? And so this is just the URL, right? Now, why? We already talked about that. But just looking at, even without thinking about McNulty, when we start with Purdue Owl Writing Lab and educate and encourage, because that's what they said on their front page, right? Written for students. Then we start thinking about, wait. Yeah, she was talking to students, right? Primarily college students, people who think they're not good enough writers. Um, McNulty works for them. She's involved in education and Purdue's a big name school. Okay. So like all of that stuff we get even without really reading it. We already know a lot, right? The summary is just, what does she say? Now we're writing a paragraph, not a couple of sentences. This article is about how people shouldn't be discouraged by thinking they have to be great writers from the start. That's also a summary. But in college, we got to give a little more. And that's where we think about, oh, can I use quotes? Can I use examples? That kind of thing, and where we're going to explain more. Um, and so once you do that, you want to read it. And you read it the first time. When you read stuff the first time, you read it just to read it, just to get it in your mind. If you're going to need to write about it, and you would read, take some notes, things you notice, but really you're just kind of experiencing it, right? If you're going to write about it, you need to read through it a second time. Now, you might not read through every single word that second time. You kind of start reading, and then you're like, okay, yeah, 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 okay, that was good, whatever. And then you're like, oh, this part, this was more important to me. And that's where you read more closely, and that's the kind of stuff you would say in this article. So we have, McNulty talks about students shouldn't be you know, like overly obsessed about being just like a good writer, great writer, think you have to have talent. You know, in this article, one of the things she points out is, so you're rereading that second time, really looking for what kinds of things do I want to tell somebody if I'm telling them, yeah, here's what it's about, but here's really what's at the heart of what she says. And so, because really, what's the hardest job about writing? 
isn't it getting enough freaking words on the page? And it always was for me. I would get halfway through the paper and I'd be like, I'm done. Anybody? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I know. And you're like, oh shit, how do I, I gotta make this long? It's supposed to be five pages? What the hell, right? So yeah, so you know, this is, this is the way you get to that, okay? Um, so you're gonna take notes on your, that second time you go through, you're gonna write down any like quotes you really like, or just say, just look at maybe each paragraph or a couple or a, if it's longer, maybe say, okay, in this page or this section, What's the main point of that? And if there's a little main point at the top of that, don't write that shit down, right? You know your teacher's going to look and be like, they already summarized that part. What, what stands out in there you want to say, right? I mean, so we can't use those old high school tricks and think that's going to work because, sadly, you know, we read our text and we're like, no, enough, okay? Now, here's where we get to the second page of that handout I just gave you. And let me find it. Where did it go? Oh, it's right here. Here we go. This is it. So things you can write about in a summary. And this is what helps us get more words down. Because we could all do that first sentence just kind of glancing at something, really. I and mean, we could figure it out. We could read the first paragraph and the last paragraph, and we could write a summary, right? But if we have to make it longer than a sentence or two, we got to say what's going on, right? So this helps you, right? What we're looking at here, what McNulty's done, is a more expressive, an essay expressive. She's just sharing her, it's like a blog post, right? She's, that's an essay. You're sharing, essay is just an attempt. I am trying to get my point across to you. That's all it means, right? And so it's an expressive thing. You know, what kind of supporting points does she give? Well, she talks about Neil Gaiman and Neil Armstrong right, being there. So that's an example. And you can say one good example of this she gives and kind of summarize that point. Um, why does the author see it in a particular way? Why is it important? You think about those things, right? You do that, write down, write down a sentence or two. Well, if you've got a sentence or two of here's what the overall thing is, you've got an example of something they give to say, here, here's what makes me think that. Maybe the Stephen King thing, maybe whatever. And you've got a kind of why it's important or why you think that person sees it that way. That's about four or five paragraphs. That's a good draft. That sounds like a half a hundred to me, 50. Let's see how we get the rest of it, okay? <laughs> all right. The second one's easy. That's all you. What do you think? And remember, you do not have to agree with everything you read. Right? You may. Right? Um, so again, the second part of this page is things you can write about in a response. So here, essay, expressive argument, quote or discuss different, different parts. Um, oh, I start with what do you think, agree, disagree, some of both, why? That may be all you need and you can just write from there. But it is a response, so also think about you and your experience. Do you connect with this? Did you ever have that teacher that made you feel horrible? Or did you have that teacher who made you realize maybe it's not about being perfect. Maybe it's about getting better, whatever it is. Explain, um, quote or give specific parts, connect to your thoughts, your experience, knowledge. And you can say, again, you could bring in a quote here and say, I really agree with this. Or say, my experience was a little, here's this quote, McNulty in the, article says, blah, 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 and you could say, my experience was a little different. When I went to school, right? I mean, like if you were disagreeing with something or something like that, um, explain how you could use it and apply the ideas, right? And we can all apply McNulty's ideas to just about anything, not just writing. I took a drawing class this, this summer. Figured out maybe I could do that too if I practice, right? And so for me, and like, well, when I went into drawing class, because I've read a lot of things like this, and I have seen student after student who feels like they're not good writers, and I'm like, yeah, you really are. And I'm not encouraging you to go out and be a writer, because that is like hard, ungrateful work, right? And really, very few people make money at it, like serious, where they can quit their day job. Very few people. But if you've got a passion, you follow that. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. But otherwise, we want good enough for work in school, okay? But the thing is, is you know 
you can be, and I know, 20, over 20 years since 1997 teaching, I know you can be a good writer. If you want to, you could also be a great writer. I, I don't do it that often, so I'm like, I'm fine with being a good writer. Okay. I like to read, okay? My draw to English was like reading, and I love language, and I'm a nerd about things, and I actually love teaching like about writing, and I, I do write. I write fairly well. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Other people have said I'm good at it, but, you know, whatever. My, my joy, my passion is helping other people. So this is where, you know, you're going to be flexible. And we'll talk about these other things as we get to them, because if you were writing about somebody giving you instructions, you'd summarize a little differently and you would respond a little differently. But we're going to start with this, where we have people talking about, you know, um, what to do, like how to do this, okay? So let's take a look. Let's see. Now, I saw, and every time I read this, like something diff stands out to her, to me. But when I made this PowerPoint, what stood out to me for her, what she said said was the solution of course is not to retreat by avoiding good writing or shying away from sharing your work instead you should we should relish these opportunities we should also change the way we think and talk about writing itself and so i really like that because that's like at the very end and she has this upside down structure where she gives her main point at the end so that you know if you're not sure you don't she's not saying oh you have to believe it this way she lays out her argument and then she says, look, you can be a good writer, right? Okay. Um, and then supporting points, like I just put these in my own words and that's what summary is, your own words. If you're quoting the whole thing, I can read it. And that's what I'm gonna write. I have read this before a number of times, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna be like, dude, no, don't quote it back. Here are my summary points. When I'm reading this and I started putting this together to do a sample to show y'all, I wrote down, we think good writers are born natural at it, not like the rest of us. We don't think they're struggle. Um, even famous writers can feel like posers, and so I put Neil Gaiman there because that's the example. Um, many of us don't like writing because we have had bad past experiences. We don't like it because we don't understand it. Um, and then I had a quote I liked here. Even if previous experiences have led you to believe your writing's not up to par, this does not mean your writing can never be good or that you don't have the potential to be successful in a writing course. So when I went through and read it that second time, I had some notes from my first time, but I just said, look, what, before I even looked at it again, I was like, what is her overall point? And that's where I came up with the first one. And then I thought, what are some of the kind of things she's giving us to show us this? And that's those two. And then I had a quote. And then I was ready to write a summary response. And look, let's look at this in bigger, nicer. On the 311 page, right up here, the top of Kelly.ninja, is we have the assignment. There's how to write a summary. The summary response to different types of readings, writings, that chart from the back of the page, okay? Um, and then here's a video of what I just went through. If you're like, I want more, teach me this again, Kelly. You can go back, that's part one. Later on, we'll do part two, we're not there yet. But there's also samples. So here is my writing. I've got MLA format. We're gonna look at this for next time. So this is what our MLA formatted college paper looks like. I called this, yes I can, a summary response to the myth of the good writer, right? I put it in quotes because why? It's a title, right? Now my own title on my own essays and stuff like that, I don't put those in quotes. If I was writing a letter and I said in my summary response, Yes, I can. <laughs> the article, of, um, in, um, let's see, um, a summary in response to the myth of good writer, boom, then I would do that. Um, so in the article, The Myth of the Good Writer, the author, Erin McNulty, and the first time I use her first and last name, after that I only use her last. Think about Shakespeare. We don't say William wrote, we just call him Shakespeare all the time, right? That comes out of academics, comes out of essay writing. You first time, you give the whole name in MLA, and after that, only the last name. No doctor, no Mr. Shakespeare, doesn't that sound weird? Mr. Shakespeare, who's that? 
It's like some weird freak, okay? All right, McNulty discusses the problems that we can run into if we think that writers are born and not made. She claims, and now I'm using my quote marks to give the quote. So if I use somebody's exact words, I put those in quote marks, okay? And I've got, she claims, the solution, of course, is not to retreat by avoiding good writing or shying away from sharing our work. Instead, we should relish these opportunities. We should also change the ways we think about and talk about writing itself. Doesn't that make me sound smart? I'm going to show you how to sound smarter than you are because I can sound smarter than I am, okay? And you notice that first sentence wasn't big words or anything. I'm just straightforward. What's this next one? McNulty also says that often we think good writers are born, natural at it, not like the rest of it. Am I throwing any highfalutin, fancy pantsy, pinky in the air language in there? No, not at all. I'm just saying it straight. Um, we don't think they struggle. I've even got short sentences. However, she shows us that even well-known writers can feel like imposters, and she gives an example of the famous writer Neil Gaiman being at a party with other famous people and feeling like he had not contributed anything to society. On the other hand, ooh, she also points out that many of us don't like writing because we've had bad, ex bad past experiences. But she says, even if previous experiences have led you to believe that your writing is not up to par, that does not mean your writing can never be good or that you don't have the potential to be successful in a writing course. So again, her words in the quote marks, right? And then overall, it's meant to encourage us, blah, blah, blah. My response, I agree with McNulty. I worry about my writing too. Even after years of schooling and practice, I still have moments where I'm just not sure. However, like McNulty, I take hope from writers I've seen who also second guess their writing. I remember in college going to a reading by Susan Twite, a biologist and nature writer from our area. As I watched her read from her shiny, newly published book, I was shocked when she paused and said, oh, I shouldn't have written it that way. It gave me such hope. She showed me that it's never perfect. It's not even about that. It's about getting better and in the meantime, sharing your thoughts and ideas with others. So yes, I do think the idea of the good writer is a myth. While some may have diff different advantages that others, than others they got them there faster, we can all be good writers. That's just Kelly being Kelly. You need to be you. Right? When we need to make it good enough for one point, we'll get there, right? You are good enough. You are good enough. You are Ken enough and you are Barbie enough, all right? But sometimes we need to be collegey enough or worky enough or whatever it is, right? And we'll also worry how to get there. But first, what's in your head and what's in your heart on the page, right? And that's why I don't use AI for this shit. Don't do that because that's not you. And I'm going to write what I always end up writing. We are not studying the computer-generated tone of voice. Please write this yourself. And then we'll talk about how we get to use that because technology is great. We want to use our tools to help us, right? But what's, what you've got to come across is what's in your head, what's in your heart. You do that, you're going to get a 100. Yeah, and then after that, you get to, to pick which ones you want graded, and I'll help you, 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 okay? All right. Make my pay. So, cool beans. So that is the, that's really going to be, that's an example, and here we've got citation at the end. This is the stuff we'll worry about later, okay? Um, so that's our idea. That's our basic idea of what we're doing. What you're doing for next time is you're going to read tips for note taking. So it just gives you a few more tips. Okay, look at it. Might be helpful. Skim through it. And then read very carefully this reading critically and actively. There's, there's more pages. We're just reading pages 1 through 10. Take notes on it. Now remember, your notes you're taking for your summary responses are different from your English 1301 homework notes, okay? Because you're going to hold on to these, and then on Monday, we'll be reading the second half of this article. You'll have notes, and then we're going to write a summary response. So point is, you make some notes, and you've already kind of got some stuff you can pull out of there and put that thing together, right? That's why we go shopping, so we can go home and open the fridge and say, okay, I'm going to cook this and this and that, right? You got nothing in the fridge, you're not cooking anything. Danae, you had a question, or were you just like, yay? Wait, can you do, did, can you do that to novel? 
You can do it whenever you need to do it, just before you come into class. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, I you're the college student. You do it. If you got time today, do it today. Yeah. You got time tomorrow, do it tomorrow. You got to wake up at five in the morning and get stuff done because you got a lot of classes on Friday morning and that five in the morning was the only time you could do it. Yeah. That's the suffering of a college student. Yeah. I did a whole lot of studying at five in the morning. <laughs> so, all right, other questions, thoughts, answers to the meaning of life? No, get out of this hot sweltering place. I'm gonna see if I can find us a different room because this is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's inconsistent. Yep, just on top. Yep. <laughs> Here, let me, let me do this. Yeah, exactly. Here we go. I'll, I'll straighten. Yeah, there we go. I'll, I'll straighten up. It'll make us all feel better. There we go.